Oh, viewer, take one. All right. So I'm opening it. So flat bottom on the inside. And um, when I open up the bottoms of these, I think about how big do I actually want the base when I'm finished to be. And that's about how wide I open up my flat part on the bottom. So then I'm gonna first pull. <laughs> it worked. I just wanted to make sure you saw that, Shannon. Yeah, I you're pregnant, I know. It's okay. Colleen was like, you do what when you throw? <laughs> she doesn't do it that way. No, she does not. Apparently it's like a, like a lot of people across the pond do it but I don't know. Um, so I'm just making it. So the cruet, it's basically a bottle shape with a little handle and a spout. If that makes sense to you. So we're making a bottle. And that has a lid too, right? Cruet, the yeah. olive, it does not have to have a lid. Some of them have lids. I use corks when I use mine, but you could also make a clay stopper. Um, I mean, there's a, there's an infinite number of ways you could make one. I could leave the top like this kind of thing, right? And you could make a lid in there, and then you'd have a spout coming off or something too. But I'm going to make mine a little more bodily shaped. I'm going to make this one a pretty relatively plain shape. So I'm necking in the top. Now there's one of two ways that you could do this. You could pour out of the top. So I could make a neck and then I could bend the neck. So it's, so once it's thrown, I could bend it and I could pour out of that and then just put a handle opposite it. And then you can fill it and pour it from the spout that you just made. That's option A. Option B, you can have that, that's the filler, and then you have another spout and a handle sticking off. So whatever you kinda um, prefer, I will show you the, we'll make the spout the, uh, the top of it. So it's kinda all one thing. So when I think about these kinda closed in spouts, um, What's the point of a spout? To pour, to pour things, okay. So what do you not want your spout to do? Dump, okay, or like dribble, yeah? So that means that you want this edge right at the end on the, the interior, so you're come if you go up through, if you're on the inside, that and then the outer lip. You want that to be a nice sharp angle. It doesn't need to be like this, a tiny little angle, but it should be a sharp angle because that's gonna cut off the flow of the liquid a little bit better. So you don't have as much risk of dribbles. Worst things, that's for sure. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up the outside of this, and I'm just using a metal rib.
this is porcelain, so there's a lot of goopy stuff that comes off. Definitely more so, oops, more so than stoneware. So I'm going to, if you've got, I've got a little bit of a wonky top on this guy, and since I'm pouring from it, I want it nice and level, so I'm just going to just take a little bit off. And you can use, if you've got big fat fingers like I do, get the end of like a needle tool wet and use that to support the inside and so the top I'm touching the top one more time make sure that's nice and rounded off well and then I'm gonna go in supporting the outside with my thumb and then I'm just gonna touch the inside one more time with this end of the needle tool. So the outside theoretically is a rounded profile and then the interior is a nice right angle to break the oil or the vinegar or whatever you're going to pour out of there. Does that make sense? Well, It's also why you see like the, in like fancy restaurants, the waiter, when they pour it, they like twist it right at the end and that gives it the dribble to kind of go around the rim instead of. So if I want to pour out of this top, I want it to be, I don't want it just sticking up like that. I want it to look like I'm going to pour out of it. So we're just going to bend it. Shannon just missed that. Oh, that's the spout now because that's what I'm gonna pour out of and there's a trick to it too and you didn't see the trick no you just go whoop I did not eagle clutch yeah I just grabbed it and bent it nothing fancy I just grabbed it and bent it um, so what to get stuff in there so i will need i'm going to put a hole here so when i make something like this i would put a hole here that i can put a cork stopper in just cut a little hole once it's firm and then i would put a little handle there There's all sorts of different ways. I mean, I've got a slightly different one in yeah. my box over there that I can show you too. All right. Yep. <clears throat> all right, so this is a little different ewer that I threw earlier today. Mm -hmm. So it's just a basic bottle shape and instead of the top being the spout, the top is going to be the actual, like where you'd fill it from. So I bent it a little bit um, and then the, that bend is gonna be opposite my spout. So it's bent back this direction, about there. So my spout's gonna be coming off that side. Now, this is way bigger than it needs to be. So what you would do is, if you think about where this is coming off, I'm gonna put this at a 90 degree-ish angle for you, and we're to imagine what angle you want this coming off at. You could have it pouring down too. That would be okay. But that, where that attaches, do I want it this way? I think I want it this way. Yeah. So 
if this is attached like this to the body of this, this is going to have to get cut probably about like there, mm -hmm. where my finger is. So <laughs> you can use like a wire knife or a wire tool or a fettling knife. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, what I typically do, I will take a wire tool that's very clean and I will make a little bit of kind of just a loop and I think about where I want this cut. So this might get cut about like, I think about where the top of my cut is and kind of hold it in place and then kind of let it naturally fall and it should be pretty symmetrical-ish. If it's not, you can kind of fudge the wire placement. And then once that's where I want it, I'm just going to press it in with my fingers. And that makes a nice little line that's a cutting guide for me. So that's one way, and then you can take a fettling knife and cut it off. So that's one way of doing it. Um, another way that works well is if you get like a piece of fishing string, you can wrap that around there and just kind of pull it a little bit so you have a little bit of a guide on where to cut. Um, I'm gonna use this handy dandy <coughs> wire knife. And start cutting about where I made my mark. So, by no means perfect, okay? But before I make it perfecter, I can set it on here, okay? I wanna think about where is the, where is the oil gonna fill up naturally in here? Well, probably do about here. You're probably not gonna fill it any farther than that. Or balsamic vinegar or whatever you typically do. So this, I'm going to attach it I'm going to have the center of the, the spout attachment be right at this line here because that's a nice visual break. So I'm going to, let's see, this has got to go in a little bit. So I just made that a little bit more curvy here so it matches that shape a little bit better. And now I just, this is kind of like hand building at this point. So I'm pinching it a little bit just to spread it out a little, a little more. You definitely don't want to wait too long to do this because then it'll be too dry to work with. And this, the tip of it, I definitely can't bend anymore because it's too firm, but this bottom part is, is moist enough for me to be able to kind of fudge with a little bit. Is that the one you just threw at this just now? No, that's the one I threw just oh, now. Okay. And because of the shape of this, I need to cut some more off the top. So I will do that. So now that I have this, the shape that I want it, and know where it's going to go. Does everybody see that? I'm going to take a needle tool and trace an outline. Okay. 
And this is the same way I do a spout on a teapot. So that outline tells me where this is gonna go. So first off, I can get this wet and score it with my little score tool. Or you can use one of those toothy ribs or a needle tool a whole bunch of times or whatever. Um, if, if you're not getting enough water on here, you can also get a sponge wet and dab that on a sponge and that's gonna add quite a bit of moisture to the end. gonna set that off to the side then so that's maybe a third of an inch ish so I'm just gonna do about the same on here A okay. Okay, so before I stick it in there, what do I need? Okay, so um, you can cut just one big hole and call it good, but structurally speaking, that's not quite as sound. So the big thing is whatever hole or holes you put in there, the, the area of those holes need to be bigger than the total area of this spout. Does that make sense? And that's gonna force that liquid into the stream when you pour. So I'm going to, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, and so you can buy these tools whew, that have this kind of sharpened edge to them to make your little holes. Um, I wanted to make some different shaped holes for a different project, so I got some of these metal straws on Amazon, and you can use those to punch your, your circles. Um, and they actually came with these nice little pipe cleaner things, which have come in handy for some other things. Um, you can use a needle tool and cut a, a hole out. You can also use a drill bit. And just, you know, Twist it, which this method works pretty slick. Yep. So I'm going to put six holes because that seems like a nice number. And this is just an extra drill bit. I had floating around from an old drill bit set. Or you can go to Lowe's and buy one. Or wherever. Pools Hardware, support your local hardware store. got a six pack now. All right. And I want to make sure there's those. So I've got some, I like to say that I keep my six pack in a cooler. Nobody likes a warm six pack. And if I've got some weird goobers on the inside that I don't really want, I can try to But, I mean, you can't really stick your finger too far in there anyways, so you're not going to cut your finger on it. So now that that's there, um, I had already wet these and scored them. So I'm going to kind of wiggle that into place. And I'm going 
gonna start pushing that attachment on there with my thumb. Now, depending on the shape of what you just made, you can take the spout and completely blend it into the piece, or you can leave that line that shows that it was something that was added later. So I like leaving the line, so I'm going to clean up said line with this tool. And it's this, the, um, when you're finishing off a piece before you let it get to bone dry, now is the best time. If there's some weird goobers, um, if you're using a transparent glaze that you want to be gone, now would be your chance to, you know, get a sponge and kind of fuss over it a little bit or whatnot. This will end up going in a wood firing, so this will have no glaze on the outside, so I personally... I'm going to want to make sure that any of that extra like fingerprints or information that I don't want there isn't there because that'll show up for sure. So I'll just, I'd much rather have some sponge lines than like weird looking goobers. And then what's the last thing that you need to do? Put your, stamp on it. Put your initials on it or your name or something that defines it as your piece because otherwise you might not get it back. Yeah, someone's gonna take this <laughs> So I'm going to take a little ball of clay. Um, if anybody is using a stamp and has a hard time with like the stamp sticking to your clay and not leaving a clean mark, you can use cornstarch and just take like brush a little cornstarch on there and then it won't stick to your stamp. Um, yeah, I, these were really expensive because they're like brass on the ends and I, uh, there's a website called Simon's Stamps that you can order like rubber, custom rubber stamps, and that'd probably be a better bet. But this is like toolsforclay.com or something like that. But I have like three different sizes, and I got a deal because I ordered three of them, but they were kind of not cheap. So um, this could be done like this. That's a nice shape. It'd be easy to kind of hold. It's definitely something that you could hold with your hand to pour without any issue. You could add a handle and you just want to make sure that that handle kind of mimicked the angle that this is jumping off of. Teapot body. This is also two pounds. So there's a lot of things to consider when you make a teapot. Primarily, you need a way to hold it while there's really hot liquid in there and it needs to pour. Right. Um, there's definitely some, you know, traditional looks to what a teapot looks like, but really you can, in this day, you can make it whatever the heck shape you want it to make. I'm going to just make a really simple kind of curvy, like uh, Mrs. Potts kind of teapot looking thing. Does that make sense? From Beauty and the Beast, the teapot from Beauty and the Beast. So if, uh, teapots, if you're making a nice round, symmetrical teapot, 
you can leave clay in the bottom and trim a foot on the bottom. It looks nice and fancy if you want to put a foot on the bottom of your teapot. Or you can go all the way down if you don't want to trim a foot, which I don't feel like doing. So I'm going to go down. Um, and since this, there we go. So that's nice and flat. There we go. This guy's a smidge off center. Oh well. So we're just give that one more good pull. Now I'm leaving some extra up in the top because we're gonna have to make a gallery for a lid. So I left a nice thick rim up here. There's lots of extra clay for me to work with. All right, there's a couple different ways that you can make a gallery for the lids. Um, and I have some examples that I'll pull out here in just a second. Um, so now I wanna make my teapot nice and curvy and not boring looking, cause this would be a really lame looking teapot. If you ask me. So I'm just gonna make the give this a little bit of a belly. The sound effects help, I promise. Alright, there we go. Nothing too fancy. And I'm gonna take there's a little extra down there that I'm gonna trim off. <laughs> Okay. So, um, like I said, this was a smidge off center when I threw it, so I'm going to trim some off the top here. So, when you go to make your gallery, you have a couple of different options. So traditional gallery, you will take your wood knife or a rib or something along those lines and you're going to have to split the rim, okay? So this is the same idea. Basically, we're making a jar. So to split the rim, I'm going right in the middle, very slowly, very gently, pushing in. So I split the rim, okay? Then I'm gonna use the back side of my clay knife of it to lay it down. So I'm just slowly moving this flat. Now if I stopped here, this has got a nice little like cup. That's one, some people make their lids like this. If you look at like old German fermenting crocs, they have a really big lid like that because they actually put water in it to make a seal, for example. Um, but you can also make a lid just like this or a gallery just like this as well because it'll fit. It's not going to wiggle as much. But we're going to keep folding this down flat-ish to make our gallery for our teapot. Now that's really big. I'd rather have too much clay than not enough clay because I can always cut off clay, but if I throw it and then I go, oh no, where's all my clay? Then you gotta start over, <laughs> which we don't want to do. So I'm gonna cut a little bit off. The trick with that is you pick how far you want to go in and you just go there and then you hold your hand there. It's done it before. 
<laughs> you gotta do it confidently. You just go for where you wanna hold it and then hold it there. Don't go, oh, is it the right spot? Just go for it and hold it there. Brace your, you noticed how both of my elbows were on my legs and I just went in and held it there. So then I'm gonna take a little bit of water, smooth that up because we don't want a sharp, sharp edge there. Because if there's a sharp edge there, what's gonna happen? It's more likely to chip and if you stick your finger in there to clean it out later, you don't want to slice your finger because that's no fun. So this is essentially, look at that, we made a gallery. Yay, teapot! Okay, there's our teapot body. Nothing else to it. Okay, so then we have to throw a spout and a lid, right? And there'll be a handle on the teapot, right? Okay, lid and spout. Okay, we're throwing off the hump, so I only need to have the top portion centered. The bottom doesn't matter. So, oops, I almost forgot the very important part when we throw our lid. So, there are two ways of doing this, depending on the type of lid that you make. Most teapot openings are small enough where you could just throw a flat lid right on the right on a bat and then slice it off and then make sure it's trimmed to the right size, set it on there. You could throw a little bowl shape that fits on there. And this is small enough where you could even have a what they call a drop lid so it'd go like this. And then the you'd have a handle or something coming out of it. So you'd have three options for this type of gallery. So you either have a a bowl shape, a flat, or a drop lid. If you get much wider than this, you don't want to use a, a drop lid for sure. Um, you want to have a little bit of a support in there. Do you ever make those lids where it's a little net, like there's like a nook in there and then you can rotate it so it doesn't fall off? Like you want to be the second hand of four? Do you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I have not done that. Um, so for that, you'd throw your lid, you'd throw a bowl, and then you'd bring your bowl in and make a little thing like this, and then you'd just add a little nub of clay. What I've seen a number of people do is they can also, you can put a little nub on the outside so it doesn't slide off when you pour forward, but then you can slide it out that way. So, more than one you need, or you can add a little nub on the inside of your lid too that just kind of like sticks out. So, definitely more than one way of doing it. Um, for teapot handles, there's three sort of like traditional handles. You can go an over the top handle, you can do an off the back handle, or you can do a side handle. I don't know if you guys have seen side teapots with the side handles. Nope, just one. And it's usually smaller teapots that you can pour with one and then you literally, you're supposed to be able to grab it with your hand and then place your thumb on top of the lid and then you pour it towards yourself. And so you don't have to worry about the lid falling off because you can put your hand on the lid while you're pouring it like that. So, to measure the gallery, you can either use calipers, so like that, and I try to get my calipers as close to the right as possible, and then I'll throw my lid just a smidge larger, because I can always trim stuff off on my lid. Does that make sense? The other option, which is what I do a lot of the times, is I have this lovely see-through ruler and I will go over the widest part. And that is 7.6 centimeters. I use the metric side because decimals are easier than fractions. So 7.6 centimeters. So either way would be perfectly okay. So, lid, I'm gonna do um, more of a flat or a drop lid. So I'm gonna come in, make it a little skinnier. Then I'm gonna push in 
and I'm making my 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 handle now, right? So technically, that would that could be a handle. Hey, look at that! Now, when I'm thinking about the scale of that compared to my teapot, I've got my calipers here, so this would be plenty wide. That'd be a really big lid for that teapot. Okay, but we're gonna so the 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 knob or finial as they're called as well. So I'm gonna go in there. And my teapot is a nice and round kind of bulbous shape. So I'm going to make a knob that echoes that shape. Does that make sense? This knob's probably way too big. Way too big. So we'll just get rid of some of that clay. All right, so this is what I said was gonna be like a drop lid. So that's gonna nest in there a little bit. I'm gonna throw this wide. Now this is way too big, right? Way too big. So, all right. Go in, stop, confidently, hold it there. making sure the, I'm compressing the rim, making sure the rim's nice and strong. Throwing that out again. Checking with my calipers. Okay, and that's still a little big. I like the thickness here. You don't want it too dainty of a rim on the lid because that's how things break. So I'm gonna trim just a smidge more off. Press that rim one more time. And that's definitely got some extra clay in there, but I'll be able to trim it off. So then to get it off the hump, I pushed in down here. So that's where you're gonna cut it off is down under there. You can use, there's a couple ways of doing it. Um, if you have like, a string on the end of something, you can let a string wrap around and then pull it off. You can use your wire tool while it's spinning to go, or you can use your needle tool. So I'm gonna kind of hold my fingers ready to catch it like this. And then I'm gonna put my needle tool in, slowly going in, going in, going in. And then once it stops spinning, I kind of lift it up with the boop. There's a lot of extra clay here. So this you'll end up flipping over and trimming the extra clay off. And then this you'd just set on a chuck or use your teapot as a chuck once that's dry to trim it. Make sense? All right, so. All right. And the last part is the spout. So when you put a spout on a teapot or anything that pours, there's an opening in the teapot that connects to the spout. Whether that's one big opening, which I don't necessarily suggest, or a bunch of little holes. The number one thing to get something to pour well for a teapot, okay, if you're pouring like an open-ended pitcher, right, there's never gonna be pressure forcing that liquid out, right? It's always air pressure, so you need to have a really nice lip with that break so it, it breaks the water so it doesn't dribble, right? With the teapot or with these closed spouts, you can make that spout smaller 
than whatever the opening from where the rest of the liquid is so that that liquid forces so when it pours the body and the shape of the spout and the teapot force that liquid into a nice concentrated stream like it's coming out of a hose does that make sense so that's what I'm thinking about when I'm making a spout so again I'm throwing off the hump I only care about the top being centered I'm gonna open down and you don't need much clay for a spout especially for a teapot that size um, the like two things that I see the the two or three things that I see beginners do wrong with teapot spouts is they make this huge spout that looks like a cannon sticking off the side of their teapot okay generally air on the side of too small and worst case scenario is it looks kind of dainty instead of like weird cannons sticking off the side of your teapot, okay? Um, the other thing is the end of your teapot, you want it to come together. You don't want it to like open out like that again because that defeats the whole purpose of us narrowing it into a stream. Does that make sense? And then the last thing is when we place it on our teapot, you want to make sure that the, the end of the spout is above where the water line in your teapot would be. So you don't want that sticking straight off the side of your teapot because then you can only fill your teapot halfway full. You want it up higher so you can actually fill your teapot. So keeping all that in mind, I'm opening this up and then I'm gonna use little baby eagle claw <laughs> and bring it up to the top. So I've got my finger hooked on the inside. I want that nice and open. So that's this wide on the outside. On the, and then it's gonna come in. So this is hollow. My finger can fit up in here. And this is one of those things where, especially when you're first learning how to do it, you just spent however long making a teapot body. When you're throwing off the hump, make three spouts make three lids and then you can make them all different and see which one you like the best okay um, that's one thing like today I was making a large jar and I want to put little handle accents on the side of it so I made like four little sketches of what those handle accents might look like and took pictures of all of them so I could compare them you know or I could stick them on without actually sticking them and then see oh which one do I like the best so it you can make a couple lids and see which one you like the best. So I've got this hollow space here, and then it's gonna come together to make the spout. Now if I left it like this, it would definitely look like a cannon on the side of that teapot, wouldn't it? So what's going to happen is I'm gonna cut off clay, because I've got way more clay than I actually need which is a good problem. And then I'm just gonna collar this in. And when I get to the end and I need to get inside of there, I'm going to use my needle tool again and throw that up a little bit. This is porcelain, so there's a lot of extra kind of goopy stuff. So then before I finish, I'm going to touch the inside, make sure there's a nice sharp spot and that the very end is the smallest point otherwise you can get some weird like glugging kind of it won't pour like a nice little stream and then i'll take a metal rib and clean it up and what i like about these is they're really flexible so i can hold it the shape that i want it to be and then it'll be that shape. All right. Then 
then I'm going to wipe my hands off. I just got all the, the sticky goobers off the outside of that, and if I go to catch it, when I cut it off and I have a bunch of slip on my hands, it's gonna slip out of my hands. And you'll get a bunch of goobers on there that we just spent time cleaning off. I'm just using my needle tool. So I cut way lower than I needed to because that's completely closed on the bottom. But I will I will trim this once it once it firms up um, with a fettling knife or something like that. So this when this goes on the side of the teapot, I'm not going to stick it like that because that looked like something strange. I'm going to cut this at an angle so that when it sticks on there, this spout is also sitting at an angle. If you want your spout to curve up or down, now is your chance to put a little sass in there. 